The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat, peer-to-peer. Buddy. Good morning, buddy. Hey, guys. Hey, how's it going, man? How are you? Good, good. Slightly behind. Uh, I had the wrong link. My fault. Oh, no worries. No worries. I was, I was like, why haven't we started yet? And I was like, oh, oops. <laughs> I was busy dorking around with um, with the uh, the regression analysis. So um, this is the weekly. <laughs> and this, this yellow line right here is always changing. Like every day that we get new data, this yellow line changes. So I haven't updated it in a while. I updated it last night. And uh, I was just playing around with it. Anyway, so, yeah, I was nerding out on charts, and then I lost track of time. Yeah, no worries. Exciting. A lot of, I mean, uh, crypto's looking pretty strong right now, right? Yeah, I mean, all signs look like they want to go. Uh, I think there's continued optimism about the uh, about the ETF. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm still not convinced that necessarily, like, this is the run. I, it, it seems like it would be too much for us to just keep going here to make new all-time highs and then just blast through. Now, that could happen. It, it totally could happen. But um, we'll, we'll look at some fundamental stuff later on that, uh, you know, that'll sort of hopefully parse that out a bit. Um, right here, we're looking at the, it's, it's BNC underscore BLX, if you're looking on TradingView. It's basically like the full lifetime history of Bitcoin. If you type crypto colon um, BTC, You'll find um, you'll find like a, actually let's just do it. So this is actually a pretty useful way of finding uh, various coins and getting their full history. Um, like I'm sure you guys have noticed, depending on the exchange that you look at, you might you may or may not find the full history of the coin that you're looking for. Um, like for example, Kraken has the full history of Monero, but then if you get on Binance and look at like XMR BTC, they don't have the full history. Um, much to our chagrin, as uh, as many people on Twitter will often paste a partial XMR BTC chart. Anyway, so if you use the crypto ticker, um, what you'll actually find is that um, Bitcoin Bitcoin was trading. Uh, oh wow, I didn't know I had so much stuff on there. Okay, well ignore all the lines; the lines don't matter. But you'll notice that this goes back to like like 2009, um, which is kind of weird. Like, how could it be trading in 2000? Uh, but I, I guess there was like early exchanges back then. At any rate, um, I didn't include any of this early data um, right here in the analysis just because I it, it doesn't quite look real to me. I'm not sure that it is. Um, maybe I'll look at it again. I think I had done most of the analysis without looking at this data, and then I looked at it like briefly, and I said, "Well, I'm not I'm not sure about it." Um, so, anyways, uh, just just for your information, you can use crypto, but the data is based on BLX. Um, and then also, I also throw out this data right here because just when you put it into like when you drop it in, into the analysis, you look at that and it, it just looks off. It looks very weird. It looks like dirty data and it doesn't look real. It's just basically flat line and then oscillating like this move is something like what is that? Yeah, that that one wick, that interday wick is like 50 percent. Right. And that that up wick down there is almost a three X, you know, on just one day. So the data seems dirty. It seems like that first exchange. Um, or that early exchange on which that price was based was like, I don't know, it seems like they were probably testing out algorithms or testing out matching engines or something like it's got to be an artifact. Anyways, okay, so we're looking at the weekly here, you can see like this is basically the big broad view. Um, now, one thing I haven't done is recalculate this red line, because we're really not sure until we finally get back to all time highs. And it looks like we're in a new bull market, like we can't really be sure. Um, if this was the was the red line low, if that makes sense, like you'll notice, even though this was the the technically like ultimate low in the last bear market, um, that washout that happened in in 2020 was was like actually the low as per the farthest deviation from the model. So you can think of the orange line as the model. Like this is this is overall like the Bitcoin model. Like this is the best way to model the non-bubble data, right? So when we say non-bubble data, we mean like that's a blow off top, that's a blow off top, that's a blow off top. Um, and so what you want to do is model the data that isn't involved in a blow off top. And to do that, um, you basically have to progressively remove the highest points. So you'll kind of, what you do is you, you plot, like you get a best fit line and you say, okay, all of this stuff right here is too high. So you'll, you'll chop off just a little bit of the top and then you'll recalculate the line and you'll keep doing that. Like you'll keep coming a little bit lower and a little bit lower and a little bit lower until you're only left with this non-bubble data down here. And that's the yellow line. 
And when you're in that zone, which we are now, which is which I kind of consider something closer to the fair price of Bitcoin. It's not hyper, you know, it's not leverage, pumped, hype, um, all that stuff. And neither is it like in some dire circumstance where, you know, like it crashed in 2020, right? It's kind of like the steady state value of Bitcoin. Um, but like I said, that changes every single day. So um, I hadn't recalculated it, recalculated it in a while. And you'll notice we're basically just oscillating around this yellow line, which is something we, we really did kind of expect should happen, um, kind of based on the, the 2014 cycle, 2015 cycle. Um, after the big washout happened, you kind of had like, it wasn't a double top, but you had like the one-two punch that happened in April, December. Um, or was it November? No, it was eh, November, December, um, which was very similar to what we got here, kind of boom, boom. Um, obviously, you know, you're not looking as, at as many X's because the market cap is so large, um, but it was like a similar structure. So anyways, um, yeah, back down here when we were oscillating around that line, uh, that was, looks like about 30%. There was about 30% difference between those two. And right now, yeah, it's about 35%. Um, so yeah, I mean, in a big broad picture, you, you know, you could say that, uh, we're basically, things are just continuing up and where Bitcoin goes. So should rest most of the rest of the market, especially the established coins like Monero. Um, if we wanted to, we could drop down here into the daily time frame, and get a better look at it. Uh, let me turn on the extrapolations. These extrapolations aren't like mathematically calculated. I didn't do that. I just dropped, I lazily dropped some, uh, curved lines. So they're not like perfect, perfect, but I mean, they're going to be within like 5%. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you're looking at the extrapolation, the highest that we could get between now and say next year would, would be somewhere around 170,000. I'd be surprised if we actually made it that far next year, but Hey, you know, who knows what could happen. So, um, let's go ahead and go to just like the regular BTC USD chart, um, that, we've, that we got drawn up. So, uh, still things are kind of just like trending in this sort of space right here that was created between, um, the different ways you could draw these lines. And, uh, you know, I mean, things look optimistic. You'll notice that as of the past day, um, Bitcoin is still like, it's, it's finally actually closed the day above that line, which is the first time it's done that it's only just barely poked above. So, you know, we need to seek some continued strength, but if we were over the next couple of days to establish above this line, um, there's a very decent chance that things could, um, start moving up to that 47,000 area. It doesn't have to get there like in one straight shot, but that's kind of how we've seen the pumps happen for, for like the past year. Like everything just pumps hard for, I don't know, could be. Like usually in less than a week, right? It's usually like one, two, three days pump, take a break, and then another two days pump. And then kind of the same thing happened here. Everything pumped basically within a week. Um, but now things are like continuing to drift up, which is, you know, I mean, that's that's nice, right? People people want their gains. Um, take a look at Monero as well. I think we're still still like trying to get out of this sort of capping line right here, this, this capping horizontal area. Um, when this thing breaks, I would imagine that it, it should break pretty quickly to the upside. Um, kind of a weird chart. If, if you ask me like a weird way to pump to the top side and then get all these like wicks to the downside, it just looks, looks weird, but yeah. Okay. Um, at any rate, you know, this thing should be breaking to the upside. We talked last week, Hey, you know, we're sitting at this level. We're looking to break, we're looking to break higher. Um, I guess we're still delayed on that, but okay. Uh, in terms of the ratio, we're still kind of hanging out in the same area, just like at the bottom looks very similar to kind of what was happening um, down here and down here. So one thing that we have seen that's that's been nice is the Monero transaction counts um, have have bumped up a little bit. So we're, we're basically sitting above like 24,000, um, kind of oscillating around the 25,000 area. And we haven't done that for a while. Like it's been... Mm, yeah, it looks like a nice little step up, right? Yeah, yeah, we had like this, this bounce. I don't know what that was. Um, yeah, it's weird. Sometimes we get these big spikes. Um, I, yeah. I have to imagine that's, that's that all about? I don't know. Like maybe it's, we've seen where we've like one time we had 60,000 transactions for a day. It just came out of nowhere. Um, could be chain analysis trying to experiment with how well can they follow outputs, um, for a period of time if they flood, you know, if they flood the network, I, I would imagine they've got the resources to play around with that. So, mm -hmm. um, why, why wouldn't you, you know, if you're them and you've got billions of dollars, like, why wouldn't you? Which is fine, you know. Thanks for the thanks for the uh, the mining money, guys. Appreciate the transaction fees. Yeah, right. Um, let's see. Okay, so there's not too much here. You know what I haven't looked at in a while actually is the uh, is Bitcoin dominance. I think I have that muted. Yeah, there we go. Um, we'll mute that as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I did draw this out slightly differently um, fairly recently. So Bitcoin dominance looks like it's kind of in this um, like upward rising wedge here. So, um, again, like I don't really have too many, too many opinions on how this chart plays out. 
there's talk now of restarting FTX. Um, they're like selling assets. And now that Mr. Bankman is out of the way, uh, it does sound there has been, there have been many mentions by the, um, by the trustee um, of, of, um, of FTX that they could restart it. So if they're able to restart FTX, that's kind of like another shitcoin exchange that they can, you know, that they'll be able to like play around with. They'll probably have to be on better behavior, but um, you know, they're still, they'll still be able to like really promote those coins and people will get excited uh, about, you know, the, the coins that FTX promoted. No need to mention them um, at this moment. Although if you did want to mention them, <laughs> here's some of what they look, what, what they might look like. Um, Dogcoin is uh, making a little comeback here. Everything else is just kind of trending sideways. And that's, that's really what the market overall um, as far as crypto uh, looks like. It's basically, um, oops, what did I do there? Clicking too fast. Uh, oh, that's what I wanted to find. Um, yeah, okay, so here's the short-term Bitcoin chart. And you'll notice, like, so this channel that we drew out yesterday, um, this, like, rising channel, um, still continues to be intact. You'll notice that we've gotten above that before. So just because we're in this range doesn't necessarily mean to expect it expect it to break. Um, but what you really want to see is this thing getting up. And um, I, I don't know where the day changeovers happen. Like, okay, here we go. Um, no, we, that's too much to get into. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I would... This channel and the way that it kind of falsely breaks out and then kind of falls down would make you think it's going to continue just doing that. But uh, it, it's hard. Like this kind of TA becomes less and less useful when you get these kind of breakouts because then you think, oh, okay, it could just be a false breakout. And then it continues pumping. And you're like, well, okay. So maybe maybe that's not like a super useful chart. Um, a big one that we, we really should talk about today is gold. So uh, in the last couple of days, gold put on some big gains. And let's go to the monthly because um, you know we really want to take a look at the big picture here. And why what happened, why um, the close of the month candle, which happened two days ago, is important. So you'll notice that, um, you know, the, the highest close that we've had on a monthly was was at this area right here. Uh, right there. And so we finally closed um, a month above the previous high. So that's kind of a big deal to have closed um, the month of November um, at this level here. And then things continued to run on Friday. So if we drop down into the weekly... Uh, you'll notice that um, that again, like we had our first weekly close. Um, I shouldn't say first weekly close, but this is this is the highest weekly close. Technically, it's the highest weekly close that gold has ever had. Now, um, it closed at basically the previous all time highs, um, you know, within less than a percent there. So gold definitely is looking uh, it's, it's definitely looking optimistic here. That doesn't necessarily mean to expect it to, to really, truly break out at this moment. Um, this could be pressure. Uh, relief, basically letting that steam valve go so that they can sort of uh, reacquire the opportunity to stop this thing for a little bit longer before it goes. But maybe that doesn't have to happen, right? Sometimes when it's time for something to go and or the cabal has positioned themselves well and they're ready for it, um, things will just go, right? Things will just go to the upside. It'll break and it'll keep breaking. So that to me, to me, gold is like a very strong signal for us to tell us whether or not the run that we're seeing is real and is going to continue. And it's like truly the next bull market in progress. In a lot of ways, it already is, right? Like even if we drop back down, so if we go back to Bitcoin here for a second and we go back to BLX, even if we drop back down to the um, to the lower regression band, right? Even if we fully touch this lower band, um, let's suppose we did something like this, right? And we drop down like that relatively soon. That's still twenty three thousand, right? Which is well above the fifteen thousand um, price point. So, um, I mean, we basically like you could, unless things like really crash in some catastrophic kind of way, we really are already in the new bull market um, in sort of a very, very general sense. But are we in like that hype phase, the blow off phase, where you're getting all you know that two x and then four x, you know, Bitcoin new all time high, and then two x after that, right? Like we're not. I'm not convinced that we're quite in that zone yet. Um, it would be a little bit early, and there are some macro signals um, that that might contradict that, or that could could give us something to worry about. Um, things like recession concerns, like that. Um, but coming back to gold, to me, gold is a very important thing for us to look at, an important metric because if gold breaks quickly to new all-time highs, establishes that, and then starts running like that, this kind of pattern right here, um, that's a a big signal that we are basically moving into a new macro large bull market and to be long with pretty much your entire stack. Um, gold runs first. That's, that's just the pattern. It's what they do. Um, again, 
you run gold first, you let that you let that steam valve go, you position yourself before that steam valve blows. So you run gold, you run it too high, you get all of the um all of the hype involved, all the gold bugs come out and they start buying your gold, right? So now you're unloading your bags onto the market and then you're switching into the markets that you actually want people to pay attention to for the long term. You suppress gold for a very long term while you keep pumping the financials market. So we're talking the Nasdaq stock market, um all that good stuff. And that's the pattern it keeps. It, so first of all, you make money because, you know, if you're an insider, if you're a cabal, if you're part of the, um, you know, the gold suppression cabal, um, you're making money off of that trade. And even if you weren't making money, even if you had to pay to do it, that's still good for you because you don't want people buying a sovereign money, a sovereign asset, a bearer asset that, uh, you know, that you can't control. So you get them excited and then you dump on them and then they don't have any gains. And then everyone sees gold for a year or two while the stock market runs. Gold is just flat. And everyone's like, I don't want part of it. I don't, I don't want any of that. And then everyone just naturally moves into the stock market. So the idea is that you're trying to um, influence the social fabric. And uh, we've talked about this many times before. But again, this is the reason why you really want to look at gold. They're going to run gold first, most likely. Um, and that will tell us that we're in a new macro bull market. So one reason to suspect that this isn't like the big one to the upside, that is not the, not to the downside is because of the reverse repos. Basically everything that we've seen for the past, um, let's just say month or two, I think has been largely propelled by the release of funds that are in the reverse repo market, right? Like all of this action where the reverse repo market was, was moving to the upside and continued to move to the upside. Um, that was, that was like bad. That was all like negative for crypto. Um, it was actually incredible that they, that so much money had left, um, had left risk assets, risk markets into the reverse repo markets. And yet we still managed to make a new all time high, um, in stocks and crypto. Um, that was a lot of leverage and a lot of fraud, but, um, anyways, this reverse repo just continues to drop, continues to fall off a cliff, but you'll notice that, uh, you know, you can't go lower than zero. So this thing at this rate will be done by January of next year. And then you have to ask yourself, well, where are they going to come up with liquidity to keep pumping these markets? Um, in the green here, this green line, that's that's sort of like the larger liquidity picture, right? So that's reverse repos, the U.S. Treasury um, uh, balance sheet, the Federal Reserve balance sheet, and the M2 money supply. So you notice this, like, uh, this big uptick right here. And this uptick signals that, hey, stocks are probably going to probably going to move up, right? The things are, there's liquidity in the market and things are probably going to move up. Um, I'm surprised that stocks didn't even take a, like hardly a pullback at all. Like it's having some resistance here. Um, but this thing could easily, especially with more liquidity jumping into the markets. If we continue to see these re reverse repos falling, stocks are going to continue going up and probably gold will continue going up with it. But once this thing reaches zero, a lot of people are asking, scratching their heads. Okay. Well, where are you guys going to get the money that you need? So for example, the federal government lately, um, they've had terrible sales on their long-term bonds and they've been relying heavily on the short, the short end of the yield curve. So, um, the lower, you know, the three month, the six month, the one year bonds, they've been selling a lot of those and they've been convincing, um, institutions to come out of the reverse repo and then buy their bonds, uh, these short-term bonds right now we are seeing, um, the long-term bonds take a pullback here and we are seeing, it looks a little bit like the short-term bonds even are starting to drop off. So. Um, if these start falling below the, uh, the current federal funds rate, that's, that starts to become a problem, right? So we, I mean, we're not there yet. Um, but if this thing starts to fall down, if these, if these bonds, if the, if the rates start to drop, um, that's probably a bad sign, especially if we're running out of reverse repo liquidity, that would be a bad sign for continued gains in the market. Now that doesn't mean, <laughs> let's be careful here because there, um, there are a number of prominent bears that um, that called the bear market uh, good on them, but that are still like heavily bearish. They're still like bear and things are going to crash and uh, we're going to be stagnant for two years and, uh, you know, it's in and recession and this and that. And while, yes, we could get a recession, we could get some problems. It seems difficult to me to think that an election year like this, um, I mean, that's just one factor, but. It seems difficult to think that they're just going to let this thing crash 50% like it's 2008 again. So while, yes, we could get some pullback, while, yes, maybe a recession does cause um, some large drop off here, you know, in the stock market over the some period of time next year, that thing will bounce back. They'll open the floodgates. They have to open the floodgates. They like they're politicians. They need the money to print for their federal government. And the way to do that is to just is to wash the markets and liquidity. Oh, and by the way. 
So yes, I'm concerned about inflation, but if they start us into a new a new bull market in 2024, like a really like a hardcore bull market, that will actually cause inflation to take a break. Because when people see the markets running and they're like, oh wow, I'm gonna make like two, three, 10x here on my investment, they stop buying stuff in the real world and they put their money, they put their extra cash into the markets because they want those mad gains. So um a running market here, if like um, especially if we get some big washout and then a new liquidity event um, where they create a bunch of liquidity, they drop rates, you know, stuff like that, the usual. Expect to see inflation. Um, I mean, nothing's going to come down. You're, you're not going to see deflation, but um, expect to see those CPI numbers um, come back into target where they want um, and expect inflation to sort of uh, chill out for a little bit, um, which is kind of counterintuitive, right? You would think that, okay, well, the markets are running, everyone is richer now, so we're going to have more inflation. Um, yeah. but you know, remember the decade after 2008 when inflation was actually pretty low, like the inflation was not, did not do what all the libertarians said it was going to do. Um, which is kind of like a, a note to libertarians. Like if you were one of the guys for a decade talking about hyperinflation and all the money and the quantitative easing, ha easing happening, and that didn't cause inflation in the real economy, you should, you should note to yourself that something more complex is going on and you need to understand why that happened. So, um, I think this is potentially one mechanism of why that happened. Um, there are many others, but yeah, a bull market here probably means inflation will take a little bit of a break uh, while while markets run for say a year or two. Um, so uh, I think you know I think that's about um, that's pretty much everything we need to look at today. I, I would say, uh, unless you guys have any questions. No, 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 no. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Yeah, I would think. I guess yeah. I never really thought about that. I would think as the market goes up, people are fear, feeling richer. They would, you would think they'd be spending more in the real world. But you're saying it's, it's they they actually get more pulled into the market at that point and are looking to just throw more money in the market and not spend. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's a partial factor, right? It's not um, it's not the full picture. But yeah, yeah, yeah. if you'll you'll notice that like 2020, 2021, for most of that time period, inflation was actually pretty good like it wasn't it wasn't terrible even though the markets had like bitcoin had just done um three x three and a half x from its all-time high the inflation didn't hit until the markets were peaking it's kind of like okay everyone wants to be in the market and then it's a bit of a game of chicken um and then people start getting out of the market say hey i'm rich and they start spending money right this in, in aggregate this kind of action happens and then people then they start realizing the top is coming gone and so people are like oh crap let me let me um let me buy something oh crap the inflation is here i better buy even more mm -hmm. um you know, so it kind of you get these like magnification feed feedback at, uh, effects. Um, seems seems like the timing is going to be pretty good for for Biden to to be out there being like, look, look at the economy, look at the stock market, look at everything, everything's great, right? It yeah. Seems, are we are we heading in that direction? I mean, I, I I really do ask myself that because the like those criminals have done everything that they possibly can across every domain to um to cheat the system. Uh, I mean, the system itself, you know, is, is cheating, but uh, never mind the anarchy part of it. They've done everything that they can to cheat the system. And so why wouldn't they cheat the markets? Why wouldn't they pump the markets and make everyone feel better going into the election? Yeah, it's like the easiest move for them. To, they're, they're definitely trying. It. It's whether whether or not they could pull it off. Right. Um, we shall see. Seems yeah, they'll have to get creative after they run out of those reverse repos. But um, I bet you they got some tricks up their sleeve. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Which is fine. Give me those gains. Give me them gains. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Thank you, as always. Greatly appreciate it, body. Thank you. Um, yeah, fantastic. Sweet. Later, guys. Thanks, buddy. Later, later.